Can we be on our feet? Can we be on our feet this evening as we just bless God tonight? Can we just lift up those holy hands and begin to give God the fruit of our lips tonight? Can we give God the fruit of our lips tonight? Can we give God the fruit of our lips tonight? Can we give God the fruit of our lips tonight? Can we give God the fruit of our lips tonight? Can we give God the fruit of our lips tonight? Can we give God the fruit of our lips tonight? I don't want you to look about what's happening. I want you to focus on the King of Glory. Can we focus on the King of Glory? Is the reason why we are here tonight. Ale karabo, renivi no si kanti bani bado shentani brade harosha. Keni vi no si kante libre no se kani bado shataya. Eko si fento, eko lante la bido shataya. Riko si keni bado si tali brade no si kane bosha. Can we invite the throne of heaven? Le kane bosha kanaya. Can I get some people that will come? Next tonight, Heli Badabosha. Can I get some people that will forget yourself and cast their crown tonight? Can I get some people that will forget yourselves and cast their crowns tonight? Anybody will somebody bring no sick and hey and oh shut up. We worship you, Jesus had a boss shut up. Regadabos see many and oh see can't tell you bring no shut up. We worship you. Can you just lift up your hands and give God the fruit of your lips tonight? Give God the fruit of your lips tonight. Anybody but all shed. Let call say fet and yabosha. Can you give God the fruit of your lips tonight? Lee Candy Badu sent me and your son tell I know. Regadabosika, can you see the host of heavens tonight? A candy in a soup and tali breno si cante la bosha. Ragado si cale, a conte fetala, a si panto seta, a sucrito si cante. We worship you tonight, Jesus. Jesus, we worship you tonight, Jesus. I enter the holies of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you. To all know I am. I enter the holies of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter.
so glorious in your ways. Hey, Carnival Shatter. Hey, you are glorious.
to God for that session of worship. Right now the hour has come 
to receive of the Lord and to lead us tonight is one who is very dear to us. I would like us with Jesus' joy to welcome General Vasia World Changes International from Kenya, Apostle Eric Israel Okere. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great you are. Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art. God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art. Sing it now. Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art. The unchangeable changer, omnipotent God, ever present Jehovah, how great thou art. Great thou art. We worship you, Lord. Invisible God. Thank you, Lord. God. I'll pray thou art. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. I will praise his name with my whole heart. With my whole heart. I will worship him. Precious Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will praise we worship the Lord. you today. I will praise we are the Lord. Lord. We reverence you, Jehovah. With my own heart. With my own heart. I will praise the Lord. Precious people. Praise the Lord. Precious praise the Lord. Hey, I will give you praise for what you've done in this place. I will adore you with my whole heart. With my whole heart, I will praise the Lord. Precious people, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will praise we worship the Lord. you, Lord. I will praise we the Lord. Praise. I will praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. With my whole heart. With my whole heart, I will praise the Lord. Precious people, praise the Lord. Oh, my brother, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the, the Lord. Lord is good. Oh, my brother, praise the Lord. Oh, my sister, praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. Lord. Lord is good. I say, oh, my brother, praise the Lord. Oh, my sister, praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. My God is good to us. My brother, praise the Lord. Oh, my sister, praise the Lord. One more time, oh my brother, praise the Lord. oh my sister, praise the Lord. everybody, praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Oh my brother, praise the Lord. Oh my sister, praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. Lord is good. We worship you, Lord. Thank you because coronavirus took none of us away. We are very grateful. Show yourself mighty on our behalf again and touch our lives. Speak to us. Feed us. And glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a joy being in this place again after two and a half years or three years. <laughs> after the years of coronavirus and I'm thanking God that because I know that tomorrow the whole place will be filled up with all members because I know nobody is missing. I know nobody was missing. No soul was lost. 
despite the pandemic, the departure of many people from this world by the pandemic, God preserved our lives. Praise God. And this church is sounding better than it was when I came the last time. It sounded like a studio, you know. The church is sounding like a studio. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to thank God for Pastor Mark, Pastor Alero, and every member of the pastoral team in the church. Please appreciate them for holding forth up until now. Hope you know that many churches closed down during the pandemic. Many people lost their congregation. Many pastors also were missing. Even in Nairobi, some churches closed down to the extent that the pastors were begging to eat because there were no members anymore and they were not online. So church is closed. <laughs> but this church is still on and the presence of God is still very much alive here. Amen. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor Mark, thank you for this opportunity granted me. All right, let's go. How to shape your future now. How to shape your future right now. How to shape your future right now. I think we should do it this way. Everybody come sit here so I can address everybody in one place. Everybody. Sit here so I can address everybody from this place. How to shape the future. Luke chapter number 19, from verse number 1 to verse number 10. How to shape your future right now. The Bible says, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Luke 19 from verse number 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Verse number three, and he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before, and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guests with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto him, Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to show you verse number four. Verse number three tells us that this man was of little of stature. That means he was small in size. He was maybe short and slim and very tiny. He was tiny looking. Um, it could mean a lot of things. His mindset was not that large. His intelligence quotient was not that big. Um, his exposure was very little. His um, experience was not that much. He had little. Everything he had was little. That's, it could mean a lot of things. But the Bible says something in verse 4, and that's what I want to settle on. I will give you close to 20 or more than 20 points on that. Verse number 4. The Bible says, And he ran before. And he ran 
before, verse number four, and climbed up into a tree to see him. He climbed before, and he ran before and climbed up. There's somebody that used to project scriptures. Where's that person? <laughs> oh, yeah, put the scriptures on his on the screen. Huh? Yes, the Bible passage is Luke 19. We're now in verse 4. He ran before and climbed up. I want to click on that. Very good. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass through that way. Father, breathe upon your word and let it do us good. Yeah. No matter how short we are, no matter how small we are, no matter how inexperienced we are, we have run before everybody. Everybody will come to church tomorrow, but we ran before ahead of them. Help us to capture the future and shape it now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, thank you very much. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree. Yes. For he was. No, leave it in verse 4. I'm just considering verse 4. For he was going to pass that way. He ran before. The fastest way to shape your future is run ahead into the future. If you want your future to be great, run ahead of others into the future. I will click on this. You'll see what will happen now. Run ahead of everybody in your generation into your future. Everybody has a future. Everybody. There's no, if you don't have a future, what are you doing on earth? Everything on earth has a future, not just everybody. But the problem is many people do not realize the route. They don't locate the route to their destiny early. So they remain behind, laid back, and they follow the crowd. Now look at this man. His name is Zacchaeus. The Bible says he was disadvantaged. He was disadvantaged in height or in size or in stature. He was highly disadvantaged. But the Bible says to us, he joined the crowd. If you read it, you see the press. Verse number two, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the crowd or the press. Verse number three says he could not. There was some limitation because the crowd was too much. Oh, okay. Many people like following the crowd. When you follow the crowd, you will miss your future. Oh, you didn't hear me. I repeat. When you follow the crowd, you miss the future. People like following the crowd. All of them are going this way. Let us go. Hey, we don't agree. Oh, we don't agree. Hey, we want to pass out. We don't agree. I don't follow. A crowd. <laughs> when you follow the crowd, you miss the future. But when you run ahead of others into your future, you will capture the future. You will capture the future. All right, let me click on that guy first before I start moving to different areas. Number one, Zacchaeus saw the need of meeting Jesus. Everyone has a need of fulfilling destiny. Number two, Zacchaeus saw his limitations in capturing his future. His limitation was his height and his stature, his inexperience and lack of exposure. He saw it. He discovered that I am inadequate in this area. Number three, he thought of solution instead of bemoan his deficiency. Many people, instead of looking into their future, how do I capture and shape this future? They start crying. Ah, I am not tall. Oh, God, if I was tall, my life would have been better. I am not fat. Ah, it's because I'm not fat. That's why I'm not married. People, young men nowadays are marrying fat ladies and not, <laughs> and not slim ladies. Ah, see how thin I am. That's why nobody's saying hello to me. Ah, my father is not rich. My father was a very poor, peasant farmer. That's why I'm suffering. Many people begin to bemoan and cry because of their disadvantaged position, not knowing that that disadvantage can push you and propel you. I discovered that this, any disadvantage in your life or in your body is an asset. I'm coming. You will soon discover it. Everything that is disadvantageous in your life is an asset. And you will see it very soon. I'll show it to you. Number four, he ran ahead of people and time into the future and captured the future. He ran ahead. The Bible says he looked. The crowd was so much. 
When he tried to see Jesus, when he tried to touch him, he held Peter. He tried to touch somebody, he told Thomas he held. Ah, when he, I got Thomas, I said, come on, leave me alone. He said, okay, fine. So he thought, what do I do? Instead of holding Thomas and Peter and James and John, what do I do? Ah, let me go ahead. If I go ahead, Jesus will pass there. Then when I go ahead, I will locate a position that will be good for me. And then he began to run. He ran ahead, number four, number five now. He took a vantage position in order to capture the future. He ran ahead, located a tree, climbed the tree, balanced on the tree so he can see Jesus while he's passing. So he could capture a full glimpse from the middle of Jesus' head to his toe. He was going to see everything. Others saw the back of Jesus. Some saw the side of Jesus. Some saw the front. This man saw the front view, the side view, the middle of his head, and the back of He saw Jesus completely. So, Hallelujah. Praise God. If you know how to run ahead, you will see everything. He captured everything about Jesus. Everything. He saw everything, including the middle of his head like this. He was looking at Jesus from top. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, number six. He got the best space since it was vacant and it was the earliest to get there. He got the best place. The Bible says, so Jesus told him, I will go and stay with you now. Now again, when you run forward, remember the crowd have not gotten there, you will occupy the best place in life. If you want to shape your future, run forward. When you get there early, you will get the best place. You will choose what you want. When others come, they will take the leftover. When others arrive, you would have taken the best place. Then they'll pick the left, your leftover. They'll start picking it. Hallelujah. Praise God. So think ahead. Earlier than everybody. Number seven. His position opened a golden opportunity for him beyond his plan. Beyond his program, beyond his imagination. How? Jesus said, today I will be in your house. Because your head is very correct. Uh, can you imagine you ran ahead just to see me? Man, are you, are you qualify. I must sleep in your house today. Your bed is my bed. Hallelujah. Praise God. He did not only capture the future, he controlled it. He ruled the future. Why? He ran ahead. Again, let's go. Number eight. One opportunity opened other opportunities for him. He ran ahead, saw Jesus. That was his desire. He didn't want Jesus to go to his house. That was not part of his plan. But the, he, Jesus now extended his destiny, extended his destiny to visiting and staying in his house. Hallelujah. Praise God. He became a history maker. He became a dispensational commander. He commanded attention. The attention of Jesus Christ. And because he took his position very early. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9, verse number 11. Please, if we are online, share it over and over because I've told everybody in Nairobi to connect so they can connect. Share it, and then if you share it even on my page, ericisrael.com, so, because they'll be waiting to connect. I couldn't put the link for them to share it because everybody wants to listen. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9, verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. Everybody read the last one. But time and chance happeneth to them all. Everybody read time and chance happeneth to them all. Now let us click on time. Time. Now I want to give you one strong injection there. Time is good. Time gives you access to what wise men could not have, what swift men, fast men could not have, what rich men could not have, what men of understanding and skill could not have. Time gives it to you. But when you are on time, listen, not just when you, are, when you come at the right time, when you go before time earlier than everybody, you capture everybody's opportunity, you become the distributor. Early. Think ahead. Look ahead. Stop fighting what is here. What is here is already conquered. Look into the future. Come before time. Coming on time is good. 
But come before time is better. Yes. Looking ahead, Zacchaeus, the short man, ran ahead. He arrived at the destination on time and before time, earlier than time. When Jesus got there, everything stopped. Remember, Jesus is the owner, the creator of the entire universe. The universe stopped because he was not just on time. He was earlier than time. And everything diverted to his house. <laughs> See, if you enjoy coming late, it is not a virtue. If you love coming late, you always prepare. You come to church late. You go to work late. You always see you at the bus stage running. They see you at the bus stop running. When you are running into the office, you are sweating. Why? Because you are not always on time. Eh, you are always sweating. Eh, you always do this at the last minute. Ah, excuse me, sir. You'll be losing a lot of things. You are a genius that would have gained a lot more if you are earlier than time. If you are earlier than time. Start thinking ahead of time if you want to shape your future and make it sweet and good. Many people always scramble for leftover because people that came on time have taken everything. Then those guys, it is what fell off from their hands. Crumbs that did not leave for you because you came late or you came on time. <laughs> you came on time. But those who came earlier, they occupy everywhere. Are you understanding what I'm talking to you about? All right, so how do I now shape my future, shape it, make it have a nice shape, make my future look awesome and wonderful? How do I capture it and shape it very well and make it fit my destiny and make my life a sweet one? Hallelujah, praise God. How do I do it? Number one, ask for opportunities. Ask for opportunities. Whenever you show up in a place, ask for an opportunity. Ask for opportunities. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, verse number 8. Everyone that seeketh findeth unto him that knocketh it shall be opened unto him. Ask. Ask for opportunities. If you wait for opportunity to come, you will be late. If you flow with current opportunity, you may be obsolete. But if you ask for opportunity, it means you are futuristic in your mindset. Then you will get a vantage position before others start scrambling for it. Are you understanding me? Ask for it. Whenever you come around, ask for an opportunity to do something. Don't just stand aloof and say, ah, some people are doing it. You will waste that time. You waste your chance. Don't say, ah, it is Pastor Mark that is the pastor. I am not the pastor. I, he knows how to do everything. Let him just do it. You have lost an opportunity. Ask. Look into the future and ask, sir, can I set up this? Sir, can I do that? I, I feel I should do this. Can I go ahead, sir? Ask for opportunity. If you ask for opportunity, you have captured the future. I'll give you an example. I don't know. Was it three or four, four years ago when I came for the first pineal? Was it four years ago or three years ago? Four years ago. Is it four or five years ago? Five years ago <laughs> when I came for the first pineal. We had the morning meeting. We had the, I came on a Tuesday, I remember. And I preached that evening as I came. After preaching, I saw a lady sitting somewhere here, and she was like this, and her hands were like that. I didn't like it. Ah, no, I wasn't happy. So I went to her, and I asked her what happened to her. She said, her house stroke. Oh, God is helping me. God is helping me. I didn't like it. Ah, it pained me. So I went to Pastor Mark, and I said, sir, can we have like a morning meeting just to pray? Just to pray for the meeting. He said, to me, he said, it's not part of the meeting. But if you are led that we should do it, I'm okay with it. Apostle Larry, it's okay. We can do money meeting and we pray. I said, it's just for us to pray. That was the opportunity he gave me. So I went to my room and I began to pray overnight. I prayed till daybreak. Father, I don't like this is PNL encounter. It's a major event. Pastor Mark have told me a lot about this meeting. How will that woman remain like that? After the convention, she goes back. 
What do we say you did here? I began to fire heaven. You need to do something about this case. Zekala Pragadusha. What's Zekalaga? By like four o'clock, I slept. Six, seven, I woke up. Then I came for the morning meeting. He announced that anybody who wants to come for prayers, apostolic, we are available to for the prayer. So we prayed in that place. It was in that place that thing happened. I, he, we prayed in that place. Why we began to pray? So I told the woman, you are getting healed now. The presence of God was now. And I held her face, prayed for her, pulled her leg. It was stiff. Pulled it up, pulled it up, prayed for her, prayed for her. To that, stand up! And she stood up, and that was all. And her body came back together. He gave me that opportunity. I asked for it because I wasn't comfortable. He called it PDM. He told me the story. So it sank into my brain. Whenever you are in an atmosphere, understand what is going on there, then ask for opportunity. Don't just sit back and say, ah, that's how it is. Ah, she has been lame for many years. Let her go. Yeah, it's okay. Uh -uh. Every problem you see is an opportunity. It is an opportunity. I was not just comfortable. I didn't like it. He told me how God has visited Peniel. Great men of God that have visited Peniel. Oh my God. I believe it was an opportunity. It was a blessing for me to be part of those who have ever visited Peniel. So what will be outstanding in my coming? How will I come and leave that woman go like that? Why did God anoint me? He took overnight prayers. And by the next day, that afternoon meeting became food. People are coming. We did it everywhere. People are not coming. It became part of the meeting. That we should have afternoon prayers. And people even came more in the afternoon. People left their offices. Why? Because there was an encounter. It, are you understanding me? Ask. If I don't just leave, don't leave anybody the way you met him. Don't leave any place the way you met that place. If you have left any place the way you left that, met the place, you have not done well. You have wasted the chance God gave you. Time and chance happened to them all. Learn to capture that opportunity when it is fresh. Number two. Number two. Learn to discover opportunities. I'm talking about how to capture the future. Everything about the future is opportunity. Learn to discover it. Opportunities always hide. They hide in the future. They hide in the, presence, but in the present, but they can open the door to the future. It hides. Learn to discover it. Whenever you see a problem, an opportunity is just around. When you see something that is not complete, it means you are the one to complete it. When you see something that is not sweet, you are the sweetener missing. It is you that is missing in that place. It's a platform for you to shine. Are you following me, somebody? It is a platform for you to shine. Always capture opportunities. Now, discover opportunities. That's number two. I came in here, Pastor Mark took me through the building. I remember we came from this door. It was that place we had the first meeting. He took me through this door. Then he switched on the light. I saw the church. Wow, this place looks fantastic. Very clean. Then he took me through that place. We climbed up. He showed me the up, up. He showed me everywhere. I was so impressed. He told me the story. 18 something. I said, wow. He told me everything. I was so happy. We moved around. We moved around. I said, ah. So this is our church. Say yes. At the entire, we have paid for it. Say yes. Eh? We paid. Wow. Very good. <laughs> you know, there are many churches that have not yet paid for. <laughs> we are renting. So he said, yes. Ah, wow. I was so impressed. We went, preached. After I finished, I was troubled in my soul. Something told me this is an opportunity. If he could leave Nigeria and fulfill this kind of obligation that God gave him here, you could do better. I wasn't getting jealous and getting angry. Ah, where did he get the money? Ah, for what? He must be a rich man. <laughs> and it is not paying me. No, no, no. I just said, no, this is an opportunity. Let me tap into this anointing. Then I said to him, sir, I need to replicate what you have done here. He said, yes, yes, you can replicate it. Oh, may God give you people that have good hearts. He said, you can replicate it. I said, I'm going back to Nairobi to replicate exactly what I see you do here. Ha. He said, you can do it. Then the wife of Ahad was speaking. The wife told, called me, Apostle Eric, Apostle Eric. I said, ah, mama. <laughs> she said, if you have picked up that vision, don't drop it. Keep speaking it until it happens. Even when people don't like you, keep saying it. I said, thank you, ma. I will never forget that statement. Then, pastor said, let's go back to church. Since you said you want to replicate it, let's go. So we came. Uh, we lied down on the altar. I think I lied down in the middle here. Pastor Lero lied down there. She, he lied down there. And then he prayed for me. He prayed. Then I was giving my offering. He said, no, I should drop the offering on the altar. So I dropped it on the altar. Then we left. 
and the vision came. Get a land. Get a land in Nairobi. In Nairobi, they don't have buildings like this. You guys, you have buildings because there are elders in this land in the 18th century. In Nairobi, you don't have those kind of elders. You build it yourself. So that was when the vision started boiling in me. I started looking for land. Now, he did something. He announced that people should sow seed into my life. People I don't know started calling me, sending me 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 200 pounds. I started gathering it together. On a year later, we bought the land. In the year I came for the last pinnacle and the pandemic struck, we started building. We started building. Maybe tomorrow I'll show you the picture. We are still building. But God has visited us. <laughs> We've not finished building. We are still building. Now, I discovered what I saw here as an opportunity. Please, no matter how fantastic anything is, discover an opportunity in it. No matter how complete anybody's vision is, see an opportunity for yourself inside it. So come in here. It's like recharging my inspiration. Recharging my inspiration. Are you following me? Whatever anybody has achieved is your own future. Look at it. Discover it and capture your future there. I captured my future and I walked away. Look at it there, manifesting. It be, now it's my past. Praise God. Five years ago, it was my future. Five years later, it's now my past. Because I made up my mind to discover opportunities. Number three, be available for, for opportunities. If you want, must shape your future or capture your future, be available for opportunities. Don't make yourself too scarce. When you make yourself scarce early, you are proud. That is pride. When you make yourself scarce early, nobody has known you. You are now too difficult to get. They must pay you 1,000 pounds before they greet you. Then if they must move you, another 1,000 pounds. If you must manifest, another 1,000 pounds. They must deposit it in your account before you even wake up. Fine. You will stay there for a long time. <laughs> Be available for opportunities. Pay your flight ticket to places. There was a time when I used to trek to places to preach. I would just locate an opportunity somewhere. I would trek. Then I would get loose. I would wipe my shoe. And then I would start preaching. Those are, I did those things in Lagos in those days. When I began to preach, I would enter bus. Bus was my pulpit. I would preach. I would love people to send me on errands so I can preach. One of them said, ah, we need somebody to go to the market to buy something. I said, I will go, I will go, I will go. Why? So I can preach in the bus. So they said, hey. Eric, you will go and get all pure water. I say, yes, yes, yes. Uh, go and get all the original ones. Uh, the reason why they tell me to go, because the original one is far. And I love going to far places so I can preach in the bus. Then I'll sit on the bus. I greet everybody here in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that Jesus is Lord. I said, Jesus is Lord. Driver, did you hear me? Jesus is Lord. Conductor, are you understanding me? I preach in a dramatic way. <laughs> I say, Jesus is Lord. I'll preach until we get to where we're going to. Sometimes I'll say, if you need Holy Ghost, Meet me at the last bus stop. At the last bus stop, Holy Ghost will come up. And I do this at the Kedja, everywhere. Who should they? They will gather. Holy Ghost! All of them start falling. Hey, hey, hey. People start coming close to me. What did I say? Holy Ghost is coming. Up. Holy Ghost is coming. Up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was enjoying myself. I was building my career, building my destiny by using those opportunities. Be available. Be available for opportunities if you must capture the future. 1 Samuel 17, verse 32. 1 Samuel 17, look at David. David captured his future by being available to deal with Goliath. Look at it there. 1 Samuel 17, 32. 1 Samuel 17, 32 says, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight these Philistines. Oh Lord, I will go. He was available. Remember his senior brothers were dodging. Remember, even Saul himself was hiding, but he made himself available. Whenever you make yourself available for opportunities, you capture your future. That's all. You pick, you arrest the future like this. It becomes your boy. <laughs> make yourself available for opportunities. You capture your future. Is somebody understanding what I'm talking about? Isaiah 6, verse number 8, the Bible says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said that, Here am I, send me. I am the one. Here am I. Make yourself available. And in fact, when you start capturing opportunity, make yourself available free of charge. Make yourself available how? Free of charge. 
I was praying in my office. In those days when my office was still at the rented apartment. I had the map of the whole world in my office. Pastor Mike have been there. So I used to lay hands on the map while I'm praying. Lay hands and pray. So I laid hands on the place and I saw it was Scotland. Wow. So I prayed in tongues for some time and I stopped. And I said to myself, you've not been to Scotland before. I need to get to this Scotland. Then I looked at that Scotland map, that England, Scotland map. I saw Dundee. So I remember the Dundee guy. I laughed. Because they told me that something called Dundee United. You guys may not know who they are. In Nigeria, we know them. <laughs> so, so I paused a bit and I laughed. Dundee. <laughs> so these guys are in Scotland. So I laughed. So they're in Scotland. Wow, they are Scottish people. Dundee. <laughs> so I prayed some more. I prayed some more. I prayed some more. Then the Holy Spirit told me, it's time to go to Scotland. Hey, Scotland? How? These two have not gone there, but I don't know nobody there. I don't know nobody in Scotland. Then I prayed and talked some more. Then the Holy Ghost told me, Pastor Charles knows somebody in Scotland. Pastor Charles Adibuki. So I called him. Hello, sir. We, I did our pleasantries. And then I told him, sir, God is telling me I need to get to Scotland. You know anybody's going to say, ah, yes, 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 yes. Pastor Mark is in Scotland. Ah, Pastor, ah, no, no, Pastor Mark is in Scotland. He's in Scotland. Say, wow, please, tell Pastor Mark about me. Tell him I will pay my flight myself. Even my hotel, I'll pay. I just want to visit Scotland. So that's what they told him. And I, was, I did it. I, I made up my mind I will not be a burden. When you start capturing opportunity, don't start being a burden to people. Don't come and say, Pastor Mark, hello. My name is Apostle Eric, very strong apostle, very strong one. <laughs> very strong. The blind see, the lame walk. The devil, in fact, we have chased like 5,000 demons into hell. They know us by name. <laughs> when you ask them in hellfire, they will say, Child, it was Eric that chased me here. Yes, sir. So, sir, I need a five star hotel. I need where they have spa and gym. <laughs> I mean, one, 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 a certain man of God called me and said, He's coming. He told me, No, I'm very athletic. I need a spa in the hotel. I'm telling you the truth. I need a gym. <laughs> so I laughed and said, In Nairobi. Those ones are very scarce. <laughs> you need to go to the U.S. In Nairobi. <laughs> it is a spa. It's sauna massage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. When you start making yourself available, please don't be a burden. Be a blessing. Don't be a burden. Be a blessing, please. That is how to shape your future. I'm talking to you about shaping or capturing your future right now. Number what? Five. Number four. Run after opportunities. When you notice that opportunities have gone ahead, run. Run after it. Sometimes you notice opportunities already escaping your hands. You are losing it. Run quickly. Wake up and run after it. Don't be laid back. Don't think it will come back. Some opportunities don't come back. If I did not capture the opportunity five years ago, saw that vision, came back the next year, reassured that opportunity, began to raise money to buy land. We bought the land. After buying the land and started building, we would not have reached where we are today. We would not. The church auditorium complete, the seven-story building complete, another seven-story, we're on the sixth floor right now. Being built, excuse me, sir, run after it. In case you notice time is already expiring, run very quickly. Don't compare yourself to a baby that just woke up and is still crawling. Don't crawl after it, run. Run after opportunities. Psalm 37 verse 23. Psalm chapter number 37, verse 23. The Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his ways. Some steps are baby steps. Some steps are walking steps. Some steps are running steps, while some are flying. Depending on the timetable of your life, you need to move. If you notice you are getting elderly, run. 
<laughs> I'm telling you. Run because time is finishing. Energy is not too much available because of age. Yes, yes, I discovered that. It's no more available. So run. I began to run speedily because I discovered that, eh? If at 40, over 40, you, have, you don't have anything in the name of God in your life, but you, your time is finished. Move. So I began to run. The steps. May God order your steps. So when you need to run and he pushes you to run, don't say, who is pushing me? Ah, let us take it easy, Jerry. And then you tell God, what's going to be is going to be. It is a lie. What's going to be can never be until somebody makes it be. You need to take an action. Learn to run. Let's go. Number five, be open to opportunities. Stop pretending as if you are too busy. Be open to opportunities. Please stop pretending as if you are too busy. When they call on you, say, ah, my, my date is booked from now to 2024. I am, and you are lying. You are trying to make them think you, are, you know you are expensive. That is difficult to get you that God has blessed you. And you are lying. I am booked back to back. I don't have any chance at all. In fact, if you push me now, it is the 2025 I'll be available. Look at the way Corona made everybody available. <laughs> Over available was <laughs> everybody. I remember in those days, I hardly stayed in church. When you see me in two, church, two Sundays, you'll be thanking God. Now, Corona made me available two straight years. I sat in one place. I was just not over availability was worrying me. <laughs> Everybody, they come and say, ah, go to church. Apostle is there. He's there. You meet him. Everybody, I don't people are coming from everywhere. He's there. Ah, he, even in the midst of God, he's, he was he's there. See, don't make yourself difficult to get if you must capture the future. If you have captured the future already, thank God for you. Yes. You have not yet captured. You want to capture it. Don't make yourself difficult to get. Be open to opportunities. Be open. 1 Samuel 17, verse 37. See David convincing the king that this opportunity, I will use it well. 1 Samuel 17, 37. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the power of the lion and out of the power of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hands of these Philistines. And Saul said to David, Go! And the Lord be with thee. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, I'm open to this opportunity. Oh, God, so don't worry yourself, sir. Let nobody be afraid. The God that helped me to tap into some little, little opportunity, he will give me this one. Be open to it. Don't make it difficult. They are needing somebody to do something. You are now waiting for them to beg you and toast you. And then the one member of the church begs you, you are not happy. You want Pastor Mark himself to come. So Pastor Mark now approach you. You are not very happy. Say, Josa, <laughs> we are begging you in Jesus' name. You know you are the only one that can do it for us. You are deputy Jesus, you know. You are vice Holy Ghost, assistant God. You know, without you, you, can, you are not very happy. You now smile. <laughs> Even Pastor Mark himself came to beg me. I know he me. <laughs> you are losing opportunities. Know how to click on it. When you do it well, your door will open. Or the See, one of the good things about opportunities is that opportunities gives back to opportunities. The one you, see, the lion killing gave back to the bear killing. The bear killing gave back to Goliath killing. One opportunity gave back to another one. When God, even God knows, when God sees that you have dealt with one well, he opens up another one for you. And people value you when you are able to handle one opportunity well. Your value shoots up. Now, whenever you get to a place and they commonize the opportunity they gave you, don't commonize it. Oh, you didn't hear me, I repeat. Whenever you get to a place and they commonize the opportunity, ah, just do anything. It's okay. This is not our real service. It's just a quick, quick, quick service. Uh, just go ahead. Just do anything. And they're all wearing uh, 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 nightwear, nightgown. And they cross their leg. And they, they don't really expect too much from you. Manifest! Use the opportunity well. Don't commonize the opportunity they give to you. Because that opportunity could open greater doors for you. That is how to capture your future. Hallelujah. Praise God. I remember when I came the first time. I was lodging in one hotel. I don't know. In one street somewhere around there. Then the, somebody came to bring me to church. I, I was thinking it was going to be like a Holy Ghost service. I was dressed in suit with serial tie. I showed up from Africa raw with fire in my spirit. When I showed up, Pastor Man showed me the entire building. But the meeting was held inside that place. Ah, meeting Kekere. <laughs> I, I thought it was the Holy Ghost service. I was so prepared. 
But I did not limit my manifestation if you were there that night. In fact, some people keep referring to that night as the hottest night they've ever seen me. I have preached there severally. But people will not forget that night. I came there and said, what? No problem. Pastor Mark told me, you have 20 minutes or so. I said, no problem. When I opened my mouth, I, it was in that meeting, Pastor Mark said, excuse me, sir. Uh, this meeting is not the meeting we want you for. We don't even want you for Sunday service. We want you for camp meeting. Because oh, that's your side. That's what fits you. I said, yeah. he said, you are coming for the real camp meeting. So I went to Nairobi to go and upload. You know, you go and carry weight. So that when you are coming, you come with. <laughs> I prepare myself. Because now camp meeting. Not a joke. Now imagine that night. They gave me the opportunity. And I commonized it. And I said, all right, everybody lift up your hands. It shall be well with you. Uh, bless you, bless you. Is my time over? Okay, two minutes more. Uh, God touch all of you. Amen. I know God has blessed me. I'm a great man from Africa. You are blessed. Amen. Will I come back for camp meeting? Camp meeting, call. <laughs> Village meeting me. <laughs> the man will just be disgusted and be waiting for me to share the grace. And they close. And they thank me for coming. I will never have entered Scot Scotland, call. Long land, me. They will leave me somewhere. Why? Because I never valued the opportunity. No matter how they commonize the opportunity they gave you, don't ever commonize it. Treat the opportunity well. That is your future. <laughs> that is your future. What number are we? Number six, communicate with opportunity. Speak it. Say it out. Keep saying what you can do. Communicate it. Communicate with it. Keep saying it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can do better than this. My future is bright. When you are talking with people, be saying what you know that God can use you to do. Believe in yourself and say it. Fine, you may not have reached there, but say your future now. That's what I mean. Say your future right now. Speak it out. Say it. Now, David is a good example of it. He said, the God that handed over the lion on the bed to me will also hand over this Goliath to me. Has he killed Goliath then? Physically, no. But he was communicating with opportunity. He was telling Saul, don't worry. I will sort this guy out. Saul looked at him and looked at the size of Goliath. I said, you are not the same size. He said, no, I can handle him. Look at the story there, 1 Samuel 17. 31 to 37, David had to convince them. He had to communicate until Saul said, Go, the Lord be with you. He had to communicate it. Before people are sure of you, you need to say what you will do. Say it with assurance. Say it again. Before I left here, that day I told Pastor Mark, I will replicate what I'm seeing here. I remember when I came back the next year, Pastor Charles told me, did you see Pastor Gwen? I said, yes, yes, yes. He came on the first day of the meeting. Then he left. Uh, then we continued. He didn't come again. He said, look for him. Uh, look. I said, but I'm with Pastor Mark. He said, yes. Make sure you look for him. I said, okay, sir, okay, sir. So I told Pastor Mark, yeah, this time I should look for Pastor Gwen. He said, no problem. So I went to Pastor Gwen. My name is Eric. He said, all right. Hey. Then he took me around this church again and showed me the office complex. I was impressed. I like that line of office that is long like that. Many doors like this, many doors. I've never been there before. Over door is wearing up the door like this, door like this, door like this. I, I just liked it. I stood there. I made up my mind, I would replicate this one. <laughs> and I told him, by the grace of God, I would replicate this. The second complex I'm building, you see that line of doors like that exactly. See, communicate, say it. The next day I came back, I told him, we've gotten the land. I trust God that the building will start. I will replicate this building, the altar, the this, the that. He said, no problem. He prayed with me again. I went back and we started. It was like a joke. And within two years, in the midst of Corona, the place was built up. When members came back, they didn't know the place again. After Corona, they came to church. Ah, we are looking for world changers. I said, this is world changers. Can't you see that that's my picture? This, ah, world changers. My members. Because Corona shut everybody into the, in their houses. Nobody knew what was happening in church. They left a tent and they met a cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I met among us. Say it. Say it. When I said it to him, he prayed with me. He will call me sometimes. Apostle Eric, what is the progress report? I'll tell him this and that is going on. This and that. Then I'll put it on video. Look at it like this. Look at it. He said, Let us pray. 
Whenever I tell him, he said, let us pray. He will pray, he will pray. The prayers will enter everywhere. He said, yeah, God, we provide for you. He will open, amen, amen. That is communication. I will send him pictures. This is where we are now. He will say, God is with you. I am praying with you. Everybody, are you understanding me? Communicate, say it. See, in life, what you say is what you see. When you stop saying, you stop seeing. <laughs> when you say it first, it looks like nothing happened. It is a lie. Many things are already happening. Ezekiel 37, let me show you. Ezekiel 37 from verse number 7. Ezekiel 37, give me verse number 7. When you say it the first time, don't think nothing is happening. Many things are happening. The Bible says, whenever you speak, you are prophesying. When you communicate the opportunity, you are prophesying. He says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I said what I was told to say. As I prophesied, there was a noise. When you say it the first time, physically nothing happened. In the spirit realm, there is a noise. What does that noise do? The noise chases away the Syrians that have occupied that place before you came. There is need for God to clear them spiritually. How did I know that? Elisha prophesied and said, by this time tomorrow, a bag of rice will be 100 naira in Lagos, Nigeria. Every Nigerian say amen. amen. Hey, believe me. <laughs> he prophesied that a bag of rice will be 100 naira in Nigeria. And a certain man on whose hand the king leaned said, excuse me, if God was to make windows in heaven, might it be the man of God said, hey, you doubted me. You will see it, you will not eat from it. Ah, please don't doubt words. Especially when people are speaking to the opportunity, shaping their future. Don't doubt them. If Pastor Mark was doubting me, he would have discouraged me. He said, no, I know you can do it. You can do it. If God helped me in Scotland, he will help you. And he prayed for me. He prayed with me. He stood at me. He called me to know how I'm doing. He sent me text messages. He, I sent him the pictures. He prayed again. He called me up. I said, can I see the video? I said, I said, I said look at it, sir. He created, you see, you keep communicating. Don't let your words die. When your words start dying, Wonderful. I didn't know. <laughs> Praise God. When your words start dying, the momentum starts dying. You lose the future. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. The Bible says, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> the Bible says, there was a noise. Number two, suddenly a rattling. King James Version says this what? Go to King James Version. <laughs> This is new kid days. The rattling. I want us to pick it. And then bones coming together. And then bone to his bone. I want to explain that place. King James Version. Now look at it. There was what? A shaking. When you speak the first time, it brings noise in the spirit realm. Remember when those four lepers began to go uh, towards the Syrians, the Syrians started running away because they heard a noise. When you speak the first time, the Syrians in your life will hear noise. They will start going away from your territory, from what God, your inheritance. Are you understanding me? Number two, when you speak the second time, there will be a shaking. Things that are on top that should be under will go under. Things that are under that should be on top will come up. Have you understood? That's what shaking does. Number three, bones came together. There will be connection. Those that should help you will start falling in love with you and start looking for opportunity to assist you. There will be connection because you cannot run the vision alone when you speak the third time. When you speak the fourth time, bone will come to its bone. There will be custom-made connections. The real bone, leg bone, will locate the femur and all that. Not that the leg bone will go towards the neck and you look awkward. No. There will be original connection, wonderful, neat arrangement that will fit Suitable, fitting connections in your life. God will fine-tune it. The Bible says, And I behold, beheld, lo, the sinew on the flesh came up, then the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Leave the breath alone. Let's talk about the skin. Now, the skin brings beauty. When you speak again, maybe the fifth time, beauty comes to what you are speaking. Then the thing begins to materialize. Everybody's skin brings him or her beauty. When they remove your skin now, you'll be very ugly, sir. But when you speak again, the skin comes. Don't stop talking. Communicate opportunities. Keep saying it. I will make it. I'm a first class graduate. I will succeed. I will build that house. I will build it. As you keep saying it, it will start taking shape. And finally, to get to 
the beautification level. All right, number seven. Retain relationships that bat opportunities in your life. Retain relationships that gives you opportunity. That's what I mean. <clears throat> Every relationship that gave birth an opportunity in your life, don't joke with those relationships. They are quality relationships. Every relationship that gave birth to opportunity in your life, please don't destroy those relationships. Honor them. No matter what happens, protect those relationships because <laughs> they can give birth to more. Yes, they can do what? Give birth to more. If you abort those relationships, you can lose eternal relationship opportunities. You will destroy your future. Every relationship that gives birth to opportunity in your life, do what? Guard them jealously. Don't let anyone come in between you and them as that relationship. Because that relationship is very important in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Proverbs 18.24. Proverbs 18 24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Always discover who God has used to bring opportunity to your life. Be, be, make yourself friendly. Don't make yourself difficult to relate with. And now make yourself overrated. Hallelujah. Praise God. You will maintain a glorious future. Number eight. Meet new challenges. That is how to create opportunities for yourself. Meet new challenges. Stop roaming around the old one and celebrating the old one. It's already done. Move forward. When we started building, we built the third building first. When we got to the fifth floor, God said, move to the auditorium. We built the auditorium. We finished roofing the auditorium. God said, go back and make it seven floors. I lifted it to seven floors. We polished it up, plastered it, painted it. God said, move to phase number two. 16th of August last year, we moved to phase number two. And we started building. See, don't stay where you are and be clapping. Very soon, that future you conquered will be old. <laughs> they will forget you somewhere. It will become very old. Nobody will. They respected it when it was fresh. When it's no more fresh, nobody will. People will say, ah, this did this very short. <laughs> it will become expired. Start another thing. Meet new challenges. Meet new challenges. Locate new things and do them. That's how to create opportunity for yourself. Number nine, express your availability for opportunities. Everywhere you go to, that's why you, can, you need your card to introduce yourself. If you don't have a card, introduce yourself. You have your phone number, at least. Express your availability. I am available for this. I am on my way to this. Create time to maintain your opportunity and create new ones. Since I've been coming to Pastor Mark, I've been to Nairobi like four times now. Three times or four times. About four times. I mean, he will come there, teach everybody, bless everybody, do other meetings. I said, that maintain it. Don't make yourself too expensive to come over. Say, ah, we have Dr. Mark now. There are levels here. <laughs> you guys need to beg me before I show up. I'm too busy. No. He created the time. Came over. There was a time we even went to the village. One village part of Nairobi. Dro no, Kenya. Not in Nairobi. We drove out of Nairobi. And then, are you understand? Create it. Don't be too big for opportunity. Because you don't know the day the harvest of the opportunity will come. Yes, yes. Make yourself available. Say, I'm available. Create that time. Are you understanding me? Create it. Don't be too heavy to carry. <clears throat> too difficult to move. Are you understanding me? All right, let's go. Number 10. Champion initiatives to create opportunity for others. Champion initiatives to create opportunity for other people. You hear that? We want to, let us do it. And then you put in others so they can learn. So they can gain from it, so they can enjoy it. If you champion initiatives to create opportunity for others, you will never be on the floor. For example, if you help somebody up, you must go up first before you help the person up. Are you understanding me? Pastor Kola, come. Imagine I want to help Pastor Kola to come up here. Look at me. If I must help him, it means I am already up. Am I right? Then the more I take him up, the more I go up. Have you seen it? That's how life works. 
a candle loses nothing when it lights another one, then the light becomes brighter. <laughs> Champion opportunities to create the future for other people. Your own future will last. In fact, it will not leave you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number 11. Develop your abilities to handle opportunities so they don't slip off your fingers. Develop abilities to handle opportunities so you don't get them and they are off your fingers again. Develop. Be a good teacher. Be a good leader. Study the word of God. Learn new skills. Learn something new. Be useful. Don't just have one-way traffic lifestyle. The day they don't need your traffic, you are gone. Are you understanding me? Keep developing abilities and skills to maintain, to handle opportunities very well. The next time you show up again, let there be another dimension of handling opportunities. Wait, is somebody learning something here? Huh? Am I delivering? Don't joke with <laughs> Don't joke what I'm saying, sir. If you can't handle the opportunity, they will give it to somebody who can handle it better than you. Are you understanding me? There are people who are understanding you and they want to do better than you are doing. So the day they show up, you become obsolete. They drop you somewhere, somebody takes over. Are you hearing me? You may not even know that God is raising them. So remember God told Elijah, there are 7,000 people who can be Elijah's now. <laughs> 7,000 Elijah's are hiding somewhere, so forget it. I can annoy them and their life will change and they change everything around here. So develop skills, abilities to handle opportunity judiciously, excellently, so you do not lose them. Number 12, get to the venues of opportunity early. Get there earlier than others. You learned that from Zacchaeus. He ran ahead of everybody. And all the opportunity became his own. He now became a distributor of opportunities. Hallelujah. Get to the venues of opportunity early. Don't get there late and they are saying, ah, well, time is gone. Just come and share the grace. Come and share the grace. <laughs> That's not your destiny. Your destiny is bigger than that. And if you just say something, say something. Praise God. Our brother, he couldn't make it early. Some people, they may even cover you up and not say you didn't come. They just say, eh, just come and say something. Or some place they will not even give you the opportunity. You lose that opportunity. Maybe if you meet a, meet a choleric pastor who is very angry that you came late, when he looks at you, one bad eye like that, you know there are levels. <laughs> even what you want to say will disappear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get to the venue of opportunities early. Why? You capture more opportunities. Get to the venue of opportunities early because you will capture more. You will discover more opportunities and you capture them. I discover that whenever I get to places, whenever I'm going to preach in a place and invite me for one whole week, I go there early from the beginning of the session, even if I'm not the one beginning so that I can learn. I discover that by going early, I capture more opportunities. God opens other doors for me. I see things, that gaps that need to be filled, and I fill those gaps and God raises me from those gaps. Are you understanding me? The healing anointing manifested when I saw a gap. Feel the gap. That was when the miraculous happened. Are you understanding? The, of course, this year that followed, other lame began to walk. Yes, but the first one that was totally healed was in an opportunity that was just created. It's not in the main meeting. Are you understanding? So get to the venues of opportunity early. Don't go there late. When you go there early, you discover more opportunity. You are able to Build a better future for yourself. Number 13, I said place value on all opportunities. I said that to you before. Place value on all opportunities. Number 14, honor those who serve you with opportunities. Don't ever start quarreling with them and start fighting with them. Honor those who serve you with opportunities. Number 15, protect your inspiration for advance, advancement in opportunities. Protect that. Whatever inspires you to look for opportunity, protect it. I love worship. I don't joke with my prayer life. When I'm praying, I imagine things that you cannot think. If, 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 don't, don't leave my brain alone. My brain would think. One day, I was complaining to God that the landed property God gave us in Nairobi was very small. During the pandemic. They were already building blocks here and there. 
I was not really happy because the lamb looked small. So you've been to the lamb. You saw how small it is. One plot, just one plot. I, didn't, I was not happy. So I prayed in the Holy Ghost right inside the tent. The church was a tent, and the tent was even leaking. So I was now praying. He said, Kalagaba, he called the Father, this tent, this lamb is small. There are many other lands everywhere. Can you enlarge our coast? Give us this territory. Look at those other adjoining land. Nobody is using it. The other one, they are harassing us when we park our car there. Lord Jesus, enlarge our coast. Jabez said, enlarge my coast. Zakalabragab, who kapata? I was firing only me inside the church. And God said, son, step out of the tent. It's good to pray. Don't look down on what inspires you to capture opportunity. There is always something that inspires you. I relate to people that pray because that's where my inspiration comes from. So as he spoke, I stopped. Then I came out of the tent. The tent was behind me. He said, turn. So I turned. See, my eyes opened. I saw the ground open up. And that building shot out of the ground. I started going to the cloud. Enter the cloud. He said to me, all those spaces, nobody's fighting with you. You own them. I went back into the tent and wrote, all the spaces up in the air. Nobody is fighting with me. I own them. So I called the architect. Come. He came. So I drew what I saw. He drew something else. I said, no, that's not what I saw. I saw a tall tower rising. That's the children's church. He said, eh? so he went. So I drew what I could draw in my own artistic style. He went and replicated it. We went to have our approval. They were wasting time before they approved it. I built it. They, by the time they were given an approval, I finished the building. <laughs> I don't believe we wasted your time. When they came, they made the thing already standing. Are you understanding me now? So, excuse me, sir. Don't allow what inspires you die. When what inspires you dies, you have expired. There is something that inspires you. Some of you, while you are singing in the church, that's where the inspiration comes. Don't joke with it. Let nobody kick you out of the choir. Some of you, it's when you are beating the drums. When you are playing the guitar, that's when the inspiration comes. Don't joke with it. Or when you are worshiping in the bathroom. Not everybody is worshiping in the bathroom. Some people don't have a good voice in the bathroom. When they sing, and we are standing. Even the water is tough. <laughs> so discover what inspires you. If you kill what inspires you, you will expire. It takes inspiration to see ahead, to know ahead, to create opportunity, to run after it, and run after If you're not fully inspired, if there's no fire to run, you will stop somewhere and you will climb a shrub. When Jesus gets there, he won't even see you. <laughs> you need that inspiration to fire you up, to get to where a sycamore tree is, where you have a vantage position. Are you understanding me? See, God is called Alpha and Omega, which is the beginning and the ending. When your inspiration cannot carry you to the end, it means you killed what inspires you. That is why as soon as the pandemic stuff became over, I decided, let me come back, let me come back, let me come, let me get to Aberdeen, first of all, so I can recharge my inspiration. Recharge it, recharge it. So I'm not only here to teach you, I'm recharging my inspiration. That's why when I came, I looked around first, I saw everywhere. Are you understanding me? I've calculated, okay, there's one big, this one, that one here. Praise God. That's the way I behave. <laughs> and I'll say what I did so that you don't think I came to, you know, steal the technology and run away. Mm -mm. I'll tell you what I did. Because making you know makes your strength, makes you know that somebody is following you. So you cannot afford to fail. So I've seen some heavy-duty machines downloading something there. It's all right. <laughs> we are coming. <laughs> Have you understood now? So always go to recharge your inspiration. Always go. Don't look down on it and say, ah, I'm already charged. You will soon discharge. All right. Number what are we? 16. Relate more with those who inspire you and not those who expire you. Relate more with those who inspire you and not those who expire you. There are four kinds of people on earth. Those who add to you. Those who support from you. Those who divide you. And those who multiply you. Check what somebody is doing in your life. Whether the person is adding to you, or subtracting from you, or dividing you, or multiplying you. So ask your neighbor, what are you doing to me? What have you been doing to me? Have you been adding to me? Or you have been subtracting from me? 
Now, those who add to you and those who multiply you are on the same area. Those who subtract from you and those who divide you are together. What does it mean to divide you? Scatter your life. There are people, when you see them, you forget your point. You feel so pained in your heart that you don't know what to say anymore. That you, the best in you won't come out. You don't need those people around you. They are toxic. Are you hearing me, somebody? All right? So, those who add to you and those who multiply and those who are those who inspire you. Those who subtract from you and those who divide you are those who expire you. It's either somebody is inspiring you or expiring you. There are people, when you meet them once, the value they will add to your life will be so serious. Those are people who multiply you. There are other people, when you meet with them, what they remove from your life, your life will not gather again. <laughs> well, the deficit that your life will, will have will be too heavy. Run away from them before your life expire. Are you following me? So, celebrate and tolerate and stick around those who do what? Inspire you, not those who expire you. So beg your neighbor, say, please inspire me. Don't expire me. opportunities for other people. All right, number six. As you start rising in life, create opportunities for other people. When you create opportunities for other people, they, you will enjoy opportunities everywhere because those you gave opportunity to, we create opportunity for you. He gave me opportunity. He came to Nairobi. We, we started fellowship. We do forward to see him every year. Every year. Are you understanding me? He gave me opportunity. I don't know Scotland before. Praise God. I remember I came here in the night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you understanding me? So he created an opportunity for me. I didn't know what to do. I don't know. Pastor Charles told him about me. Are you understanding me? Do it well. And then when they give you opportunity, don't mess up. I've told you, don't mess up, sir. Because I am standing here by the integrity of Pastor Charles. Not by my integrity. That man of God. I can't afford to mess up. If I mess up, I've messed him up. Because he will come and say, ah, the man you sent to us is a thief. He took one of the computers. <laughs> he took my laptop and ran away. Ah, we thought he sent us the man of God, not a thief. <laughs> but he called him and said, wow, thank you for sending him. He's a blessing to us. The man is happy. Hallelujah. Praise God. This pastor is moving up and down. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Number 18, prepare for your golden opportunity. There is a golden opportunity for everybody. Mm -hmm. Receive anointing to be a preacher like me. There is a golden opportunity for everybody. See, there's an opportunity that's very golden. If you lose it, you have lost for life. I will show you the story. How many of you remember the story of David and his brothers? The day Samuel went to anoint them. That's what they call golden opportunity. The Bible says to us, all of them came out. They wanted to pour the oil and God said no. Then David came. God said pour the oil. He poured the oil. Am I right? His brothers will be thinking, another chance is coming. You see this boy? Is it because they anointed you? Chai, we are coming. They will anoint us too next year. <laughs> Do you know that year never came until all of them died? That's what they call golden opportunity. Are you hearing me? That's what they call what? Golden opportunity. Everybody must have one golden opportunity that will open your door permanently in the place. <clears throat> Mine is preaching. Yours could be something else. Please prepare for your golden opportunity so you don't behave like Shama and the other brothers of David. When they lined up, they wanted to pour oil on them. Oil refused to flow. God said, don't look at their face. Their heart is very bad. They have very wicked hearts. Take them away from here. Turn them to a soldier. Let them go and be fighting one in the war front. The day they die, fine. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Don't lose your golden opportunity. Prepare. There's a golden opportunity coming. When you will stand and heavens will open over you and your destiny will be sorted out permanently. Pastor Deboe must have had many golden opportunities. But I remember one. Lekki 98. That was the opportunity that made the redeem enter global map. Lucky night. I trekked to that meeting myself. I will never forget. That was when redeemed Christian of God became redeemed Christian of God. Praise God. Globally, sir. It was after that meeting, everything exploded and erupted and redeemed. Globally. If he missed that opportunity, he would have messed people like us up because all of us are enjoying the proceed of that opportunity that that man captured that day. Are you understanding? 
Many people are connected to your opportunity. If you mess it up, you have destroyed many destinies. Utilize it well. Use it well. Please don't mess up. Prepare for your golden opportunity. I close number 19, number 20. Save and invest in preparation for opportunities. Save and also invest. Prepare yourself, prepare teachings, prepare many things in preparation for opportunity because opportunity will always come. He says, time and chance happen to them all. Time plus chance is equal to what? Opportunity. And you use opportunity to capture the future and shape with it. The more you capture the future, the more you capture for you shape with the future. You shape with the future. You become very useful. They know whenever this guy comes, he's a blessing. The guy is blessed. So you prepare yourself. Not when you come. Sometimes you are good. Sometimes you are not good. Eh, eh, eh. You are permanently good. Lansom B. Permanently good. Hallelujah. Praise God. So save and invest for opportunity. Save and invest for opportunity. Finally, connect others to opportunities. You know this guy is good. And this lady is good. Connect them. In fact, opportunities that are not good for you, locate who it's good for and give it to them. Yes. There are times people ask me, come, come, and I'm not able to go. I say, I know another man of God. Very good guy. He can do it. And I send them there. So that's it. Connect people to opportunities. Don't hoard opportunities. Be a distributor. <laughs> Be a commander of opportunities. That is how to shape the future. Is anybody having a question? <laughs> because I'm teaching today. <laughs> Praise God. I give like 20 points. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And whenever you see opportunity, leave a positive and lasting impression. Don't spoil your opportunity because first impression lasts long. <laughs> Don't give a bad impression. Don't give an arrogant impression of yourself. Humble yourself. Remember I told you, give the first opportunity free. Yes. Free of charge. Free. Don't start charging people. Yes. Is there anybody with any question? So what have you learned today? All right. What have you learned, sir? That's the first, last thing I said. <laughs> what have you learned? Just one thing out of many. Yes, ma'am. Ma? Honor those who serve you with opportunities. Yes, ma'am. Run ahead. Don't wait for them to give it to you. Run into it. Yes, ma'am. Champion initiatives <coughs> to create opportunity for everybody. Yes, sir. Retain relationships that gives you good opportunities. Don't waste them. Yes, ma'am. Ask for it. Say, excuse me, can I clean this chair? I'm a very good chair cleaner. I can clean it. Say, clean, it. clean it free of charge. They will not tell you to be clean all the chairs. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how to do it. Yes, sir. Make yourself I'm not expensive. Don't be too arrogant. And then they need to knock your door, write a letter, write it in English and Spanish before you come. Mm -mm. Make yourself available. As you start rising, protocol will be observed. Don't worry, protocol. Protocol will bow. But enter very quickly. If that Zacchaeus was waiting for them to beg him to run, Jesus would have gone to heaven. <laughs> he ran by himself. Nobody paid him for the running. Did anybody pay him? No, he ran. Yes, ma'am. What have you learned? Thank you. Prepare ahead. There was a day I came to Peniel. I don't know which of the Peniels I came for. I was in the hotel. Then I said to myself, why should I be in the hotel when somebody else is teaching? I wouldn't even want to watch it online. I want to sit down and learn from somebody. And I left my room. I remember Pastor Udeme was supposed to be with me. But I didn't see him. So I said, no. He met me here. Let, he asked me, why? Why did you go away? You have just come. I said, no, no, there's no need for protocol. I just came to learn. So I came. I sat around where he was sitting there. And the teacher began to teach. And suddenly, Pastor Mark came and said, hey, Apostle, you are here? Oh, yeah, go to the panel. I said, ah, 
I don't know what they were discussing. He said, no, 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 no. Ah, Pastor, Apostle, ah, you are too loaded. You are too loaded. Go to the panel. Ah, panic. I don't know the thought. He said, don't worry. You pray for you. Do something. Anointing. Why? Use the thing. Oh, Jerry. He pushed me. He pushed me. So I said, okay, fine. So they put one more seat. I think one corner there. Then the camera faced this other side. So I went there. I sat down. When the first person spoke, I started getting a glimpse of what they're saying. Second person spoke. Then I discovered I have done that study before. I had more than 30 or 40 points on it. Ah. So I searched my iPad. Pa, 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 bam. The thing came out. Sure. I was waiting for my opportunity. Some of you remember that day. As soon as I grabbed my microphone, remember I had 10 minutes. I was talking. Ta, ta, ta. One mayor was around there. That mayor became my friend. He said, ha, ah, ah, ha, You are, <laughs> you are just manifesting. Ah, oh, my leg, okay. Ah, you studied it. I didn't study it in one minute. I did the study at home. I prepared. I didn't know the opportunity was going to come in Aberdeen. Are you hearing me? There was a the time I went to Nigeria. A certain lady visited us in our church in Nairobi. So I told her, when I'm in Nigeria, I'll visit you. So that day, I finished preaching in the evening. In the morning, I remembered her meetings are in the morning. I said to myself, wow, let me visit this lady today. So I, some young men used to follow me in Nigeria. So that five of us, we got the car. We got to our meeting. When we got there, she saw me. She was so happy. That day, it was also a panel they were having. She said, man of God, stay in the bar. I said, no way. I don't know what you guys are. She said, mm -mm -mm. you will release fire on us. We want the fire. Fire is enough. When I sat there, they started. It was four or five people on the panel. And I discovered it was a study. I have two studies with more than 50 points on each on that topic. Oh. When it was my turn, I took the microphone. I started talking. People shouted, lie, wo, we, lie, wo, we, ha, okay. <laughs> I prepared for that opportunity. That door opened permanently. Are you understanding? Prepare. Who gave us that point? Prepare for opportunity. <laughs> yes, sir. Relate well with those who inspire you so you can get more inspired. That's how I came. So I can get more inspired. I'm not finished in Nairobi. I'm not finished. Yes, mama. Thank you, ma. Be at the venue. Run ahead into the venue of opportunity. Be there early because you will capture more opportunities than you planned for. Yes, sir. Brother Demi. I'm telling you, open this your eyes. Whenever you see a problem, it's an opportunity. Like I saw that lady, it was an opportunity for God to do something in Pinion that will explode Pinion to another level. Hallelujah. Yes, ma. Wow. So she means don't be too conservative. Don't be laid back. Don't be behind. I said, no, we need to study that guy well. Okay? His head is okay, but his hand is not yet okay. We need to study his hand. <laughs> Don't be too conservative. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Hmm. That's right. So don't select those who will inspire you. <laughs> select those who will inspire you. Cameraman, what have you learned, sir? <laughs> Stay where you are inspired. Don't lose that inspiration. If you lose it, you will cut the journey short because you need that inspiration to start and finish. Some people always have abandoned projects because they lost inspiration. They couldn't stay around the vicinity that they could be inspired anymore. They went away from there. They thought they were already okay. When they now wanted inspiration, it, could no longer, it was not there because something inspires you. Stay there. Thank you, sir. <laughs> See this rich man. God bless you. Talk to us. Place value. Don't ever look down on any. They told you to speak to 20 people. Do it very well because you'll soon be speaking in the stadium. So do that 20 people well. Yes. <laughs> okay. Go search for it. Run into it. Don't sit at home and wait for it. It will never come. All those who were at home, when opportunity came, they lost it. Check the senior brothers of David. They were all at home. When opportunity came, they all lost it. It was a man who was in the forest searching for opportunity that captured it. I remember when Goliath's opportunity came, he dealt with Goliath by the experience he had with previous opportunities. Remember, opportunity gives us to more opportunities. What have you learned, madam? Create opportunities for others. Thank you. What did you learn, baby? 
Okay. What about you? You've been around for a while. <laughs> Sir? No, no, no way. Create opportunity for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Be mindful of them. Please respect them. Don't look down on them so that that door does not close. Yes, ma'am. A lot of people are depending on your opportunity. When you capture it, they follow you. Look at the opportunity. Do you know some people are eating in Nairobi today because of the opportunity I captured from here? As I'm here, people are working. They are building the church. For the past two years, they have been earning salary. Some of them bought motorbikes, landed property from earning, earnings, building the church. I dedicated motorbikes of builders in my church last Sunday. They are blessed. One of them sent me text while I'm here. I said, thank you for putting food on our table. It was an opportunity I captured from here. They are eating. They don't know me before. It was an opportunity I brought them. They are now members of the church because I said, if you walk in this church, you must be inside this church. And they sit there. Have you understood now? Many people are waiting for the manifestation of you as a son of God. If you fail, you have failed generations. Ah, Uti Bangonje. There will be many people inside hellfire mentioning your name. Crying your name. Ah, you sent us here. Yes. Yes. Very good. So into it. I did that here. I did that in Pastor Chris's church. I left. I emptied my account, first of all. When people saw that, everybody became crazy. One man called me in the night and said, excuse me, sir. I have not been able to sleep. It was 3 a.m. I have not been able to sleep. God said I should buy the doors in the church in Nairobi. Eh, eh, I, he told me to buy a number of doors. But when I didn't do, obey, God said I should double it. Please, give me the account so I can pay first. When I pay so that before God doubles it again. Ah. So I, <laughs> why? I did mine. Invest into your opportunity. Don't look down on your opportunity and think, man. Invest into it. Thank you very much. Because when you invest into it, see, do you know I slept in that forest for two years? In the bush where we were building the church. I slept there inside that tent on a three-seater chair for two years. My wife complained, everybody complained. But when they saw me there, the crowd came there. Many people started coming. Governors started coming. People started coming. There. You must pay the price here. Then everybody will celebrate it. Your opportunity is your future. Shape on it well. Hey, what have you learned? Ota, you see that point I mean? Develop yourself so that when the opportunity comes, you can handle it, not destroy it and waste it. Imagine when the opportunity came for me to do that night vigil, and I said, hey, "Let us pray." We are going to thank God and say, Scotland, it is well with you. Ah. And I'm yawning. Ah. <laughs> I will never be in the camp meeting. True or false? It was my manifestation there. Pastor Mark looked at me and said, you will come to, you are too, hey, this opportunity is too small for you. There's another one. And that's what brought me to Pinion. Have you understood now? Bow your head, let us pray. I command the creation of opportunities for you. Go ahead, pray. I receive anointing to create opportunities. From today, I will never be laid back. I will achieve great things. I will be a very important personality on earth. I will not be a wasted investment of God on earth. Opportunity. My future is shaped in the name of Jesus Christ. My future has shape because of opportunities. Ezekatanda 
Mazia katanda labragadoshe katusa. Oreke teke 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 te. Ikolondo. Go ahead, pray. Father, ship with my future by opportunities. I don't want an empty future. I don't, I don't want an empty future. I want a future loaded with opportunities. I want a heavy duty future. I want a wonderful future. Go ahead, fire the prayer. I don't want an empty future. Let my future be opportunity loaded. In the name of Jesus, I shape my future today. I shape on it in the name of Jesus. He's a go 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 Oria kala gada 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 ba. Oria katanda labra gado she gaduza. Ose kala gaba gado gado ba. Maroka tanda labra gado she gaduza. Ose kala gada gada gabra gado she gaduza. He katanda labra gado she gaduza ta. My future is shaping you today by wonderful opportunities, by great opportunities. Now go ahead, plan the opportunity. Say it, opportunity. You are waiting for me, in my future. Everywhere I step into, every day there is an opportunity. Every week is an opportunity. Every year is an opportunity. Every month is an opportunity. As I enter into each new day, I enter into new opportunities. I enjoy uncommon opportunities every day of my life, every second of my life, every minute of my life. Ah, I capture opportunities. I capture, I capture my future today. I capture my future right now. I capture my I capture my future now. It will not slip on my fingers. It will not. It will not slip on my finger. I capture my future now. Momo, I captured it. Mazate te te ke bregadu shata. Ozia kala bagadan tala bregado shigaruza. Ikala gada gada. Ikala gada gada bregado goro 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 ba. Ore kala gada bagara ba. Mashika panda leka do soto. Ireke panda leka do shata leka raba. Let it be so. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Oh yeah, get out your note. Get out your note. All right, five areas you want God to give you good in opportunities. Five. Quick, 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 quick. Five areas. You want God to give you golden opportunity. Write it. There's an atmosphere. There's an anointing here. I, feel, I felt the anointing when I began to pray. So let's use it quickly. Five areas you want God to give you golden opportunities. Five areas. Five, 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 five. Five areas you are requesting from God golden opportunities. Please don't joke about it. If you marry a wrong person, your life will be hell on earth. So ask for golden opportunities. Yes. If you get a wrong job, you'll be like a square peg in a round hole. Ask for golden opportunities. If you go to the wrong school, lecturers will attack you and they'll be, they be like vampires on you. Ask for golden opportunities. Golden opportunities. Mazeka Pan. Oh yeah, go ahead. Speak on them. If you have written your five, start praying on them. Lord, I receive golden opportunities in this area. In this area of my life, I receive golden opportunities. Go ahead, speak over them. Pato kato kata. Ikalabagadusha handa. Oriya kanagabragadoshe gaduza. Oh yeah. Speak to them. Speak to them. Speak to them. In the name of Jesus, I command golden opportunities to arise. Arise in this area. Arise. Let golden opportunities arise in these areas. Mareka panda le kadusha, oreka ten de le kadusha handa, oze kataka pragadoshi. I command golden opportunities to arise in these areas of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command golden opportunities rise up, rise up, rise up. Come on, come. Let golden opportunities come in my life. Oh, yeah, cry out to God, cry out to God. Let golden opportunities come to me in these areas of my life. 
I expect golden opportunities in these areas. Patale katonta. Ore kelega de gabrega do shegarusa. Ose galaga da gada gada gabrega do shegarusa. Ose galaga de gada gada gada. Maroka tonda lebra gado shegarusa. Ose galaga da gabrega do gaba. Maroka tonda lebra gado shegarusa. Ikalaga da gada 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 gaba. Ore ya kalanda lebra gado shegarusa. Golden opportunities, golden, golden opportunities. Ose galaga da gabrega do shegarusa. Ore ya kalaga da gaba gado gaba. Maroka tonda lebra gado shegarusa. Iso gada 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 gaba. Golden opportunities. I ask for right now. Golden opportunities. Masikata kale pragado shegaruza. Oreka tanda li pragado shegaruza. Golden opportunities in those areas. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Bring the paper. Bring the paper. Let me touch it. Bring, bring whatever you wrote. Bring. Come, 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 come. Let them touch it quickly, quickly. Come, come, come. Golden opportunities locate you in these areas. In the name of Jesus, golden opportunities locate you. And I'm not joking. You will see it. Expect it. Golden opportunity locate you in this area. In the name of Jesus, sir. Golden opportunities locate you. It's time for your next phase. It's time to move forward. Your destiny will not stay in one place. Your destiny will not be retarded. Move! Start locating golden opportunities in the name of Jesus. Golden opportunities locate you in this area and beyond in the name of Jesus Christ. Golden opportunities locate you in these areas and beyond in the name of Jesus. Golden opportunities receive them in the name of Jesus. I see you moving forward. You are taking giant strides because of golden opportunities. In the name of Jesus. Next person. Golden opportunities. In the name of Jesus. Write it full in your notes so that it doesn't, you don't lose it. Because it will happen. As in write it in your notes that is not detached like this. So that you will not lose them. I release the anointing on this. You will enjoy golden opportunities. You will not lose them. You will enjoy it in the name of Jesus. Next person. Golden opportunities. Let them come. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see you moving forward. Thank you, Father. I see doors opening for you. New frontiers. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Golden opportunities. Coming your way. Struggles are over. You push a lot before something happens. It will no longer be so. Because you're not being controlled because of these golden opportunities. In Jesus' name. Next person. Golden opportunities. Amen. Let them locate you. Amen. In these areas and beyond. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let them run to you. Amen. With this, they will start coming towards you Amen. on their own Amen. without struggles. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Golden opportunities locate you. In this area, you will not be laid back at all. I see them coming. You will enjoy them in the name of Jesus Christ. You will swim in golden opportunities in Jesus' name. I command golden opportunities to locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Golden opportunities come. Rest in her bosom. Let her enjoy them. Let her use them maximally. You, you receive grace to maximize the opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace to maximize the opportunities in Jesus' name. Next, golden opportunities come your way. Much more than you can imagine. You will enjoy on earth in the name of Jesus and it will come speedily in Jesus' name. Next, I order for golden opportunities in your life. Let them show up in all areas of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive them now. I release on you the anointing that attracts golden opportunities. It is already coming. Capture them. Amen. Discover them. Amen. You will never lose them. Maximize them. Amen. Let them add value to your destiny. In Jesus' name. Receive power to capture golden opportunities. You will see them. You will capture them. They will favor your destiny. They will make you the fortunate one. In the name of Jesus Christ. You receive golden opportunities in life. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it rest on your life. In Jesus' name. Golden opportunities, sir. You will capture them. You will utilize them. You will maximize them. And then you create opportunities for others. In Jesus' name. Golden opportunities is your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the mighty hand of God rest upon you. From now henceforth, you will testify from one breakthrough to another one. From one new thing to another new thing because of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Golden opportunity is your portion. Receive them in the name of Jesus Christ. God does you good by these great opportunities. You will not miss them. You will not slip off your finger in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, when did you appear? <laughs> this is unilateral rapture. He brought you by the wind. Golden opportunities is your portion. You will not lose them. The mighty hand of God rests upon you. You will conquer from one to the other, to the other, to the other. And it will make your life uncommon. Men will connect to you by this. Abba, your life will not be a blessing to others. Distributor of opportunities. In Jesus' name. Golden opportunities. I thought you came before. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing on this. I command golden opportunities to rush you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be limited in any way whatsoever. You have more than enough. The Almighty God will position you well. In Jesus' name. Amen. I declare you blessed. I declare that this church is the church of opportunities. If I came here and saw an opportunity, everyone who enters here will see opportunities. Nobody will come here with a wicked heart. Nobody will come here to bury their talent. In the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you that came today will testify concerning this meeting. Shortly, when you are telling about, ah, when did it happen? Ah, where were we? Ah, it would have already happened. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Make sure you don't lose hope about your opportunity. Remember, when your inspiration dies, the project will stop. The progress will die. Remember, when you speak once, there will be a noise. Huh? Then there will be what? A shaking. Then bones, connections will start. And then customized connections will begin. Then beauty will show up. Then the thing will manifest physically. So when you speak once and it has not started happening, keep speaking. Because something is happening that you cannot see. Remember when the lepers were going towards the Syrians, they did not know they were already running. Am I right? It was when they got this, ah, they've run. That's how it is. What you are, what you are, you know, is supposed to run away from is already running. What you fear is already running away from you. So keep approaching. You will get there. May your hand capture golden opportunity this year. And may God give you several. The louder your amen, the better the opportunity. The smaller your amen, the smaller the opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you. In fact, by tomorrow, some of you already have testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This new week we are entering tomorrow is your week. Your week to enter into realms you never imagined. Tomorrow's service will be uncommon in this place. God will meet us at the point of our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody should say amen. amen. Remember to come early tomorrow. Come to your place of opportunity early. God bless you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd just like us to share, say a word of prayer. Let's just stretch our hands toward Apostle and just pray that the Lord will continue to endure him with fresh grace, that the Almighty God will empower him the more. Let's ask that the Lord will replenish him even in virtue in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray that the Almighty God will continue to uphold him and keep him going. Thank you, Father, for every word that we have received tonight. Thank you because it's been a blessing. Thank you because it also is refreshed and blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for every spoken word we have received tonight. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Quickly before we leave, we'll just take our offerings. Amen. We just ask that we have a, a, a simple song so we just wrap this all up together. Please let's fill the, the forms and... Um, you know, indicate the gift aid right behind it. And we just we just fill our offerings and then we just take a song and then we wrap the whole service up. Amen. Just to
Wonderful, your name is excellent, your name is beautiful. I worship you, Lord, for you are mighty. You got the whole world in your name, Heavenly Father. been good to you. Hallelujah. The Lord has been good to us all and we shall hear, we shall see, we shall behold wondrous testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like us to share the grace together in fellowship. Amen. Uh, how many of us will be here tomorrow for the service? Aha, uh -huh. by God's grace. So also tell somebody, invite someone else to be here. Hallelujah. Amen. All in the respective parishes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shall we share the grace together in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now turn to someone and say, neighbor, surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah.